So you've gone out and you've shot some beautiful 4K footage, but now it's time to edit it. Unfortunately, your laptop isn't cutting it. It's too old, it's too slow, it doesn't have the processing power to handle all of that 4K footage, or 6K, or 8K, and so you're stuck. You can't get your project out. What are you gonna do? The answer, my friend, is proxy footage. First of all, what is proxy footage? Well, proxy footage is nothing more than a low resolution copy of your original footage, whether that be 10, uh, 1080p or 4K or 6K or 8K or whatever it is that you're shooting. What ends up happening is this low resolution footage is smaller in size. It is using a more compressed codec, so your resolution isn't gonna be great but that low resolution, smaller file is gonna run through your computer like butter. It's gonna be so smooth, even though it's not gonna look great, it's going to allow you to edit. And the best part is because the low res proxy file is connected to your high res 4K or higher file, when it comes time to export, your application, in this case, Adobe Premiere, is going to not look at the low res copy, it's gonna go look at the high resolution copy and it's going to export a high quality uh, final project that you can then give to your client or put up on YouTube or wherever the final destination is. So here we are in Adobe Premiere and before we import our footage, a couple of things that we should probably do ahead of time to make sure that we are going to have our file organization nicely done. First of all, I've created a number of bins uh, down here that you can see. You can create these however you want, but the more important part of this is that when I go and I save this, and I'm just gonna save a copy so we can see what I'm doing. Uh, in my video editing project uh, folder, I'm gonna create a folder for projects. This is where my project is going to be saved. This is where all of my um, additional information is going to be saved, the cache files, and most importantly, we can set this project file to be the place where all of our proxy files are stored. We probably don't wanna get them mixed up with our original video files, so making sure that we have a project folder in addition to all of our other folders in here is going to help us out quite a bit. Then when we are setting up our project, we're gonna go into the project settings. This is where you would name your project and decide where you're going to place it. Uh, the scratch disk area, set this up however you like or however it's recommended at your facility. I just always keep everything with the project file. The thing that we wanna look at right here is the ingest settings. Now by default, the ingest settings will be turned off. So you will see a screen that looks like this. And what we want to do is turn on ingest settings and there's a number of things that we can do. We can copy the files as they're being brought into Adobe Premiere and then those extra files, those duplicate files can be stored somewhere else. It's a good way to back things up. We can transcode these files, which means taking the original file and turning it into a different format and codec. This is probably something that you don't want to do. What we do want to do is create proxy files. Now, if you've already created a backups of all your files, you don't have to worry about the copy and create proxies. Although if you do need backups made before you start editing, copy and create proxies is a good way to go about this. But for me, since I have backups for everything, I'm just going to leave this at create proxies. The next thing that you're going to have the option to do is select what proxy preset you want to use. And depending on how your system is configured, you may have more or less uh, presets. I used to have presets for GoPro and I used to have presets for uh, QuickTime and all these different ones. Uh, but in this newer setup, I have just the default. So we can do an, a low resolution H.264. We could do high resolution. We could do ProRes. Some people have suggested that if you shoot in ProRes, it's a good idea to make your proxies in ProRes. You could do Cineform, DNX, HR, just depending on whether you're doing uh, VR, or those kinds of things. For this example though, and I think if you're going to be editing on a laptop, the H.264 low resolution proxy is really probably the way to go. And then it's going to say, hey, where do you want these proxies uh, saved? And I always save this to the same as the project. Again, this is just a way to keep your proxy files uh, away from your original files. You could use a preset destination, cloud files, or choose your own location. But I always use it the same as location 
and then I click OK. What this means is when I'm ready to bring my files, my original files into Premiere to edit, I can simply drag and drop them into my selected bin. In this case, I'm just going to drop them all into the video file. And what's going to happen is because Premiere has been told that, hey, when you bring in video files, you need to create proxies from those files. It's going to go ahead and bring those files in and it's going to open Adobe Media Encoder. And Media Encoder will use those presets and it will automatically start generating proxy files for your project. Sure, it's going to take a while for your proxy files to export out of Media Encoder. But here's the thing. If you do a little pre-planning, this can be done overnight while you're sleeping. For me, what I usually do is before I go to bed, as I start the encoder going, and then by the next morning, all the files are already encoded into their proxy files, and I can begin editing. This is definitely something that is going to take some adjustment from you, and it's going to take a little getting used to, hey, I need to do some prep work before I actually edit, especially in this day and age where we're very um, used to shooting something, editing it, and getting it out there within the same day. Okay, everything is finished, and it's been about 15 minutes to encode these files. And granted, they're not very long files. Some of them are just, uh, well, one of them seven minutes, one of them's a minute, four minutes, five minutes. These aren't super large files, but it's still taken 15 minutes to encode them. Keep that in mind when you're going to be editing longer projects. It's going to take some time to encode. Now that everything's done, let us take a look at the files to see how much smaller they are. Here we have our DJI 15 drone footage is four gigabytes in size. And if we open up the project folder where we are actually storing this project, remember we said that the proxy files were going to uh, stay with the project and not with our original footage. We can see that our DJI proxy file has gone down to 4. Uh, 413 megabytes in size. That's quite a savings. You're probably already noticing one of the drawbacks of proxy editing, and that is that you're having multiple files on your computer, the high resolution copy and the low resolution copy. And even though the low resolution copy is smaller in size and maybe even smaller in file size, it's still taking up space on your hard drive. So when you're proxy uh, editing, when you're editing with proxy footage, you need to make sure that you have enough space on your hard drive to accommodate those proxy files. But how does this look? Well, I'm going to just jump down here into the timeline and let's just work with a 4K sequence. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my uh, drone footage and just make a new sequence out of it. Now, this is the original file and you can see as I play it back, it's struggling. It is really struggling for this very smooth, beautiful footage. So how do I now work with the proxy files? I don't have to re-import the proxy file. Don't have to do that at all. Instead, all I need to do is turn on this little button that's called toggle proxies. Now, if you do not have toggle proxies available in your little uh, submenu right here, what you need to do is click on the button editor and that will bring up your button editor, all the buttons that you have available to you. And you want to find the uh, the proxy toggle proxies icon. And you're just going to click it and drag it right down into this bar and release. So let's take a look at that. OK, we're just going to click that and drag and drop it right down here into this bar and hit OK. Now we can toggle this proxy on and off. And when I toggle my proxies on, I'm going to zoom in on this. On this footage, let's go up to let's go up to 300 percent, 400 percent. And one thing that you might notice when we're in this high resolution view is we do see a lot of detail that's going on in our image. But it is slow to respond. It doesn't play back smoothly at all. But when I toggle on my proxies, one thing we should notice because we're at 400 percent and we're give it just a second to kick in is that these proxies are not a great resolution. They're pretty crummy. They're pretty low res. 
But if I play this now, look how smooth that is. That's playing back really fast, and I'm at full resolution here. I'm not even trying to knock this down to half resolution or smaller. So one of the shows that I edit for Majorspoilers.com is a show called Munchkin Land. And that is a show where we have three cameras shooting 4K uh, resolution video that are capturing the talent, the board, and anything else that we need to get for the project. What I end up doing is I bring those files into Premiere after I've synced them together with our external audio recording. Uh, and um, Pluralize will create a, a sequence for me where everything is synced up. That then comes into Premiere. Those proxy files get created, and then I am able to edit a multi-track session in lower resolution on my computer over a network, and I don't have any problems with it. In fact, one of the things that I do is uh, I edit on the road with this very laptop. Now, my son does soccer and does traveling soccer. And on the weekends when I'm trying to get a show edited for a Monday morning release on our YouTube channel, I need to be able to edit. And so I will often just transfer all of those files and projects onto a portable hard drive. And then when my family goes to sleep at night after the soccer uh, for the day is done, I'll just sit and edit and do a multi-track, multiple camera edit right there in the hotel room, right here on this laptop. And then when I come back, I'm able to export the project uh, from the hard drive. I connect it to my uh, faster computer and I just export the 4K uh, project and then I'm able to upload it and get it out to our fans. Editing on the road with 4K footage is super, super easy when you use proxy files. I hope this answers some questions for you about what proxy files are and how easy it is to create proxy files and edit with them in Premiere Pro. But if you uh, still have some questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.